Flashback to 56 years ago in the country now watching to see if tomorrow's Democratic National Convention kickoff sees anything like the violent DNC protests in Chicago back in 1968. Tens of thousands of anti-Israel protesters vowing to descend on the Windy City streets tomorrow, setting the stage for comparisons to the chaos of the 1968 Democratic Convention. Let's bring in former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mr. Secretary, good to see you. No question that uh, anti-Vietnam demonstrators were very committed back in 1968. But so it would seem are anti-Israel protesters these days, uh, based on what we saw earlier this year. Here's what the New York Post said about what might be ahead. Roughly 100,000 anti-Israel protesters expected to descend on Chicago to steal the spotlight from the DNC Harris Walls ticket. What are you expecting in Chicago this week? Well, John, Sandra, it's great to be with you. I, I do hope that the Chicago police are prepared, that the uh, sheriff's offices are prepared to make sure that there's not violence, there aren't people injured. But second, we know that these protesters, they may be anti-Israel. I think that's true. But remember, these are the same people. And I, frankly, I think some of them are just paid and don't even know why they're there. But the leadership <laughs> of these protests, John, the leadership of these protests is, is pro-Islamist, uh, hardcore left, uh, progressive, uh, believe deeply that America's place in the world is indecent and that the problem is us, the United States and Israel, and not these Islamist terrorists. This is a, this is a view that is antithetical to the most fundamental ideas of America. And sadly, they're there in Chicago because they think their presence can mm -hmm. sway the Democrat Party even further to their side. And we have seen that. We've seen it in the Biden administration where they've demanded Israel conduct a ceasefire 10 months ago, John, before the Israelis even had a yeah. chance to take out any part of Hamas. The Biden administration has been holding back Israel from securing its own sovereignty for months and months and months and has caused more death and more conflagration. And we still have tens of thousands of Israelis that aren't living in their homes from the attacks from Hezbollah in the north. You still have Americans held hostage, John. We don't even, President's mission, Harris won't mention this once, I predict. She won't mention it once in her speech. Mm. Uh, this is what these protesters are doing. They are the left anchor of the Democrat Party. And it is sad to see that one of two, two of America's major parties has succumbed to the progressive pro-Islamist wing uh, inside of their own party. Well, certainly Kamala Harris seems to have tried to throw those protesters a bone to a greater degree than President Biden has. Listen to what she said after meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu. This was back on July the 25th. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. We cannot look away in the face of these tragedies. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering. And I will not be silent. But that didn't seem to buy her any points with anti-Israel protesters. They were still heckling her at a rally that she had in Detroit. So she seems to be throwing Israel under the bus to a large degree and not getting any political benefit from it. You know, from my life in politics, John, I saw that when you don't know who you are, when you don't know what you believe, when you don't stand with core American values, you're going to disappoint everyone. And that's what these protesters believe. They, they saw that and they said, she'll not be silent. And we're, their, their voices are saying, no, you, you're not going to be silent. You need to come out uh, for us. Uh, I predict she'll make no mention of this in her remarks at the convention. She wants to stay as far away from this issue because inside of her party, she knows that the, uh, that the Elon Omar wing of her party is strong yeah. and capable. And frankly, I suspect that she has a lot more sympathy for it than President Biden does in his heart of hearts. Yeah, so an echo of the 1960s the other day at a Harris Waltz rally. Listen to what protesters said about Governor Kathy Hochul and New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Kathy Hochul, what are you Wow. Yeah, back in, 19, in the 1960s, 67, 68, the chant was, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? <laughs> I mean, everything old is new again. Yeah, time, time sort of looked the same uh, in, the, in the following sense is it is such misplaced anger. The responsibility for every one of these deaths, and I, I agree with Vice President Harris, that every death is a tragedy, but the responsibility for these deaths is squarely in Tehran. Mm -hmm. The responsibility for the hostage being held is squarely in Tehran. And the Hamas terrorists, the Hezbollah terrorists are all being funded and underwritten and trained by them. And so to, to blame Kathy Hochul or 
to blame the Israelis for these deaths fundamentally misunderstands what took place there and Israel's obligation to protect its own people. So, you know, again, going back to 1968, uh, Mayor Richard Daley was heavily criticized for heavy-handed tactics using Chicago police to try to control the demonstrators. He, he once infamously issued orders to, quote, shoot to kill arsonists, shoot to maim looters. Uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson is promising a, a softer-handed approach, saying, quote, we are focused on collaborative solutions and have extended this approach to our convention preparation to balance the need for security with our commitment to free expression. I mean, maybe uh, Mayor Richard Daley went too far, but is Brandon Johnson going far enough? Yeah, I suspect that the protesters aren't looking for collaboration with the mayor. I suspect that's the last thing on their mind when they show up in Chicago. Uh, the law enforcement officers know how to secure the city. They frankly, they fail to do it every weekend in Chicago because of the failed policies of, of the mayor and, and district attorneys like Kamala Harris was when she was a DA in California. Make no mistake, the police are going to have their hands full. And while we want everyone to have the right to speak and protest freely, I suspect that the protesters that are coming to Chicago have different thoughts in their mind. And they're going to make this as difficult for the DNC as they possibly can in the security professionals need to make sure they're prepared for that. All right. Well, we will see as the week unfolds. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.